right away. It's a matter of life or death. Oh, relax, Archie. Relax. <laughs> Yes, indeed, it's time for Archie Andrews, his family, and his friends. Archie, Jug, Mom, Dad, Betty, Veronica, and all the gang in the little town of Riverdale. They're all familiar to millions of readers of Archie Comics Magazine, and now they come to radio. So relax, folks, relax. You heard the old saying, uh, never look a gift horse in the mouth? Well, as far as Archie's concerned, that's a horse of a different color. And uh, furthermore, today's story has nothing to do with horses. It's all about, well, listen and find out. It's early morning, and we find Mr. and Mrs. Andrews in the dining room with breakfast. Where's the toast, Mary? Oh, it's right in your hand, Fred. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm all mixed up. Now, dear, you just have to relax. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I haven't got much time this morning. I have to be in the office in ten minutes and clean up my work and meet the eleven o'clock train. Oh, goodness, you don't have to swallow your toast in one piece. You'll get indigestion again. Well, I can't help it, Mary. Mr. Lodge has appointed me a committee of one to meet Mr. Hotchkiss and show him around the school. It's entirely up to me to... to... Don't we have any butter today? It's margarine, Fred, and it's right next to your coffee. Oh, yeah, I can't seem to keep my mind. Now, dear, you just have to get hold of yourself. The way you act, anybody would think it was a matter of life or death. Well, don't you think the education of the future generation of Riverdale is important, Mary? And don't you think that my contribution is worth anything? Now, Fred, I never said I that. I am fully aware of what you said, Mary. As the committee of one, it's up to me and no one else to convince Mr. Hotchkiss that an annex to the high school is absolutely vital. Yes, Fred, I know. And I'm sure that Mr. Hotchkiss will realize the importance of the annex and will agree to recommend the necessary funds. Ah, that's where you're wrong, Mary. Mr. Hotchkiss is a hard nut to crack. He's a representative of the governor's office, and where funds are concerned, they... Now, what happened to my coffee? <gasps> oh, you got your sleeve in it, Fred. Oh, darn it. Everything's going wrong today. Well, I gotta go. But... Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Fred. Oh, and there's one more thing. Be sure not to use the car today. It's got a carbon monoxide leak, which has to be fixed. Something wrong with the exhaust. Oh? I'm gonna call the garage. And don't forget about the dinner, dear. Mr. Hotchkiss is a stick. Yes, for you. Fred, I know. You already told me. Now, you don't have to bite my head off, Mary, just because I'm concerned. But I'm not biting your head off. It's you who's been up in the air. Now, Mary, I haven't said anything that you could possibly misinterpret. I'm not misinterpreting. Well, you I said... think, Fred, that you're making a mountain out of a mole here. Now, Mary, that kind of accusation will only leave. Fred, me... I'm losing my patience. Well, how do you think I feel? Don't you know Good morning, that? Everybody. And that'll be enough out of you, young man. She was. What did I do? I don't know. Nothing. Never mind. Just make sure you don't do it. Do what, then? I... Oh, never mind. Goodbye. Goodbye, Fred. Golly. What's Dad so sore about this morning? Oh, he's worried about the future of Riverdale, Archie. He is? Is it something I should worry about, too, Mom? No. Now, you sit down and eat your breakfast. Yes, Mom. And don't make a career of it, dear. I have to be in the day nursery in ten minutes. Okay, Mom. I'll finish my orange juice and toast and oatmeal and milk and eggs and jam before you can say... Before you can... Well, gee whiz. What's the matter now, Archie? Gee, look at this headline. What headline? Where are you going, Archie? I'm going to call Jughead. Oh, boy. Archie, will you please finish your breakfast? Yeah, Mom, in just a minute. Riverdale 47, operator, 47. Riverdale 47. As soon as I'm finished with this call, Mom, I just want to talk to Jug. Boy, is this going to be something. Hello? Hello, Jughead, come on over. It's a matter of life or death. Relax, Archie, relax. But, Jughead, it's right in this morning's paper. Look for yourself. I mean, listen to this. It says, Nazi prisoner escapes from camp near Riverdale. All citizens are urged to keep a sharp lookout. Uh-huh. See, Jug? Maybe, maybe we can organize a searching party. You know, a manhunt. You think so? Sure. Well, all right. What do you mind if I finish my breakfast first, Archie? I can't do much searching on an empty stomach. All right, and I'll finish mine, too. You do that, Archie. Goodbye. I'll see you in five minutes. Goodbye. Now, Archie, I want you to keep out of trouble. Oh, sure, Mom. I'm not going to do anything rash. If you don't have to worry, I'm just going to keep my eyes peeled. I can at least do that, can I? Yes, I suppose so. And if accidentally I should happen to see the Nazi prisoner, the least thing I can do is to report him to the FBI. Isn't that right, Mom? All right, Archie. Eat your breakfast. Oh, boy. Wait till Veronica reads the headline. Local boy captures escaped Nazi single-handed. <laughs> Are you sure the paper said the escaped Nazi prisoner was in Riverdale, Archie? Golly, would I be telling you a thing like that if I wasn't sure? Of course I'm sure. Yeah, but the war with Germany is over. What's that got to do with it, Jug? 
Gee whiz, the way you talk, anybody think you never read the papers. We still got Nazi prisoners, and when they escape, the FBI wants everybody to keep a sharp lookout for them. Hello, Archie. Hello, Chuck Hill. Hello, Archie. Hello, Veronica. Hello, Betty. Did you read about the Nazi prisoner? No. Right after school, Archie and I are going to organize a hunting party to track him down. Sure, oh. we're going to capture him single-handed. Oh, Archie, you're too funny for words. I don't think that's so funny, Veronica. I don't think that's so funny. I think it's hilarious. Well, I don't. Sure, you tell her, Betty. I think it's a very good idea. And I'd like to come along, too. May I, Archie? Well, I don't know. Man hunts aren't safe for girls. I don't see why not. Now, Betty, let's not argue. Let's, let's not... Gee whiz. What's the matter, Archie? Do you feel sick? Gee whiz. What's the matter, Archie? Do you have the cramps? That's, that's him. Who? That's him. Where? Over there, standing on the corner. The Nazi prisoner. Oh, Archie, this is too silly. Come on, Betty, we'll be late for school. No, you go ahead, Veronica. I want to see what happens. Very well. Bye, Archie. And don't forget to write to me when you get to Washington. And be sure it's on FBI stationery. All right, Veronica, all right. Maybe I will. FBI. Are you sure that's him, Archie? Of course it's him. Didn't you read the description? I think we better do something before he gets away. Oh, there he goes. He's walking up Linden Avenue. Golly, that's right, he is. What do we do now, Archie? Oh, I, I, I think we better follow him. Well, that's a good idea. You go first, and I'll be right behind you, backing you up. And I'll be right behind you, Jughead. And I'll be right behind, right but. Be- oh, come on. Let's get started on our manhunt. <laughs> planning to hide in the high school. What's he doing now, Archie? Can you see? He's tying the door to the gym. Oh, boy, maybe he's thinking of blowing up the school. Oh, Jughead. Oh, come on, Archie, we better go in. You know what happened the last time we were late. Mr. Weatherby... Now, listen, Jughead, what's more important at a time like this, Mr. Weatherby or the Nazi prisoner? Gee whiz, if we don't do something right away and let him blow up the school, there won't be a Mr. Weatherby. What are we going to do, Archie? I'm, 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 I'm going to capture him. How? 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 Yes, How? Don't rush me, Jughead. I'm trying to think. Well, maybe he has a gun. That's right, Archie. Anyway, it's half past nine. All right, all right. If you don't want to help me, then I'll do it alone. Oh, of course we'll help you, Archie. Won't we, Jug? Well, all right. We'll help you, Archie. What do you want us to do? Oh, I... I don't know exactly. Well, maybe we better tell Mr. Weatherby and let him do the capturing. And let the Nazi escape in the meanwhile? Besides, what would Veronica think? I mean, she was... I don't want her to think... Oh, I mean, I want to prove... I want to prove I that I'm... I know what you mean, Archie. You do? I mean, you do? Yeah, we do. But I still want to know how you're going to capture him, Archie. I got an idea. Why don't we tie him up? Tie him up? With what? With rope, of course. Hey, it's a good idea. Why didn't I think of it before? Betty, you go in the gym through the back way and get some rope. I think you'll find some underneath the benches on the far end. And get one of the football blankets. What's that for? To throw over his head, of course, so we won't see. Oh. Then all we have to do is sneak up behind him, tie him up, and then I'll go and get our car and we'll deliver him to the police. You want me to go now, Archie? Sure, and come back as soon as you can. All right. I'll be back in two minutes. Shh, she'll hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be back in two minutes. Okay, okay. I still think it would be better to tell Mr. Weatherby and let him do the capturing. Gee whiz, Jughead. Sometimes I think you're scared of your own shadow. Who said I'm scared? Who? I did. You take that back, Archie Andrews. I won't. All right, Archie, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll just go inside and leave you here. All right, go ahead. See if I care. Betty and I will do it alone. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm going, Archie. Go ahead. I don't care. And don't ever talk to me again, Jughead. Not, not, not ever? No. Then give me back my quarter. I haven't got your quarter. I'll give it to you tonight. Archie, Archie, I've got the rope and the football blanket. All right. Let's sneak up behind him. Well, wait, Archie. I'm going with you. Who said you could come, Jughead? Who said? I did. All right, then. Come on. Gee, thanks, Archie. Now, now he's walking to the front entrance. I got an idea. You run in front of him, Betty, and distract mm-hmm. his attention. Then Jughead and I will rush up behind him, pull his blanket over him, and start tying him up. All right. Goodbye, Archie. Remember me if I should get killed. Sure, I will, Betty. You, you, I'll get her. That's a friend. Ah! Okay, I got him. All right, Jughead, stop tying him up. We got him back inside the gym. Boy, boy, wait till Veronica hears about this. Will she be surprised? <laughs> Give me the shovel, Betty. Don't hit him too hard, Archie. He won't be able to talk when we bring him to the police. Don't worry. I'll just tap him. Oh! There. All right, Jughead. Let's carry him. Boy, 
It's he heavy. Look out for the horizontal bars, Archie. I can see them, Betty. I can see them. Look out for the wrestling mats, Archie. I am looking out for them, Jug. Archie, my hands are giving way. Hold on to him, Jug. All right. I'll bring his feet up this way. Okay. We'll roll him under. Oh. oh, boy. I'm numb all over. You think we ought to tell Mr. Weatherby now so we can call the police? Now, Jug, I told you we're going to take him down ourselves. Gee whiz, I got to show Veronica It's 10 o'clock, I... Archie. It is? Gee, I'd better hurry up and get the car. You and Betty stay here, Jughead, and watch him. Me, Archie, me? All alone with the Nazi prisoner? Oh, gee whiz, you'll have Betty here. But she's a girl, Archie. I resent that, Jughead. You resent that you're a girl? I resent your thing. Well, that's a fine thing, Betty, when a man can Oh, can't... tie a can on it, Jug. Now, you wait here until I get back. And if he starts squirming again, don't take any chances. Just use the shovel. Don't worry, Archie. When we get through with him, he'll, he'll look like a victory garden. <laughs> Hello? 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 Hello, Fred? Yes, is this you, Mary? I've been calling you for the past hour. Where have you been? Well, I've been at the day nursery. And, Fred, I have bad news for oh, you. Oh, look, Mary, I have no time for that. Have you seen Mr. Hotchkiss anywhere? Who? Mr. Hotchkiss! Mr. Hotchkiss! I can hear you. Don't shout, Mary. I'm not shouting. He wasn't on the train. They said in the capital that they took an earlier train, but he's nowhere in town. I thought maybe he'd come out to our house by mistake. No, dear, he's not here. Uh, Fred, I have something to tell you. Mary, if it has anything to do with Archie, I can't listen now. I must find Mr. Hotchkiss. If he's wandering around town somewhere with nobody to talk to, I'll be disgraced for life. I'm sure your Mr. Hotchkiss will turn up somewhere. Now, Fred... Mary, I am very busy. I'll have to call the police. The police? How did you know? How did I know what? That our car is stolen. Without having the exhaust fix? What? Stolen? Yes. You mean it's not in the garage? No, dear. The garage doors were wide open and the car's gone. Well, why didn't you tell me that before, Mary? You're well, having I did... you on the phone for the past half hour and you didn't mention a thing about the car being stolen. But I've been trying to tell you. Now, Mary, let's not argue again, dear. We'll let bygones be bygones. I'll have to notify the police immediately. Yes, you do that, Fred. And if you hear anything about Mr. Hotchkiss, you let me know at once. If I hear anything about Mr. Hotchkiss, I'll... Uh, well, goodbye, Fred. I think I'm going to lie down. Well, what's the matter? Are you sick, Mary? No, but I'm going to be if another thing gets lost or stolen. Hey, take it easy, Archie. You nearly hit that car. I saw him. I saw him. You don't have to tell me how to drive. He's wriggling again, Archie. Oh, gee whiz. Keep the tire over him. I am, but he's wriggling anyway. <laughs> Let's hit him again with the shovel. Now, take it easy, Jug. we got to bring him in in good condition. Well, he's not in such good condition anymore. Hey, watch out for that car, Archie. I'm watching it. I'm watching it. Gee whiz, I can't do everything. Oh, boy. Now you did it, Archie. Now you did it. I told you to watch out. Oh, golly. Here comes the driver of the car you hit. Oh, golly. He's carrying a monkey wrench. You sure fixed it, Archie. It's 12 o'clock. We haven't been to school, and you just crashed into a car. We have a Nazi prisoner tied up in the back. Boy, are we going to get it? What's the charge, Mike? Well, the... please, Chief Clink, I can explain. You see, we were on our way here anyway with the prisoner. What prisoner? The Nazi prisoner, the one we captured. We were bringing him in. That's a fine cock and bull story. You're not going to get off with excuses like that, young fellow. But, Chief, you can look for yourself. He's in the back of the car. Did you see anything in the back of the car, Mike? Nothing, Chief, except an old blanket attire and a shovel. But that's what I mean. I mean, that's him. That's enough out of you. Go ahead, Mike. I well, demand justice. These kids are deliberately and maliciously devastated. And that's enough out of you, too. Well, go ahead, Mike. Well, it was about 11.27 a.m. Oh. Or maybe it was a little later, or maybe a little sooner. Go on. Well, I was walking my beat as usual, except that I stopped in the cigar store on the corner of Fountain Avenue to investigate a complaint about a noise that a woman made because she says there was unnecessary disturbance. Get to the point, Mike. Well, the point is, this young fellow here smacked his car into this guy here. And he had no driver's license. That's right. And I demand that these kids be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Now, just a minute. Please, Chief Clink, you got to listen. The Nazi prisoner... Now, just a minute, young man. I demand that these kids be punished. It's getting so it ain't... Now, but just just a minute, mister. Mr. Clink, Archie's telling you the truth. Now, just a minute, miss. He tried to allay for school, Mr. Weatherby. Now, just a minute there. You can even call my father and ask... Quiet! Quiet! You too, Mike. Yes. Now... 
Let's get to the bottom of this. If you'll only call my father... I intend to do that. And furthermore, I intend to call the judge and the truant officer and the principal of your school. Mr. Weatherby, will that be necessary, Chief? It will be. Oh. Hello? Chief Clink speaking. Yes? Oh, yes, Mr. Andrews. Oh, boy. What's the serial number? Z2365J. A black sedan with a dent in the front fender. Stolen this morning. Chief, Chief, that's the car with these kids. That's uh, the license number. Uh, just a minute. Uh, what did you say, Mike? I said that's the car those kids were driving. Are you sure? Look at the registration card. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, quite a coincidence, Mr. Andrews. We just caught your car thieves. Three of them. And your car is right here in front of the police station. Yes, a- an accident. Ran into another car. Yes, sir, Mr. Andrews. We'll hold them all right. Mr. Clink, I mean, Chief, we can explain. I mean, I can Has explain... Has that to be enough excuses out of you? Mike? Yes, sir? Lock them up. Yes, sir. Hello? Weatherby speaking. Oh, Mr. Weatherby, this is Mr. Andrews. How do you do, Mr. Andrews? I'm uh, glad you called. Uh, I want to speak to you about Archie. He has uh, been, uh, not uh, now, Mr. Weatherby. Later. I, I want to speak to you about Mr. Hotchkiss. What about Mr. Hotchkiss? Uh, have you seen him? No. Isn't he with you? No. That's peculiar. Did anything happen to him? That's what I'd like to know. Oh, Mr. Lodge, this is Mr. Andrews. Oh, hello, Andrews. I've been waiting for you and Mr. Hotchkiss. Where are you? Uh, uh, Mr. Hotchkiss didn't by any chance come directly to you, did he? Why, no, isn't he with you? No. Why, what happened to him? That's what I'd like to know. Hello. Hello, Mary. Did you hear anything? About what, dear? About Mr. Hotchkiss. No, Fred. Oh, uh, dog. Don't swear, Fred. I didn't swear. I only said doggone it. Well, don't say it. Oh, uh, Fred, have you called his office in the Capitol? I called it three times and I sent three telegrams. They keep insisting he's right here in Riverdale. Well, how could he be in Riverdale when he isn't in Riverdale? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> What time is it, Archie? Two o'clock. Oh, boy. Gosh, it sure is cold in this jail. Wait till Archie's father gets here and finds out it's us. Huh. He'll be warm enough then. Do you have to remind me, Jug? Do you have to remind me? He's your father, isn't he? Sure. That's his car, isn't it? Sure. And it was your idea capturing the prisoner, wasn't it? I know it, Jug. I know it. All right. Then I'll keep reminding you. Oh. Your father is sure taking his time about getting here, Archie. And that's a fine thing. That's all I have to say. We start out by capturing a Nazi prisoner, we end up prisoners ourselves. That's a fine thing, Archie Andrews. All right, Mr. Andrews. I'm glad we had the situation straightened out. Yes, Chief. Thank you very much. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Andrews. Goodbye, Chief. All right, Archie, come along. I want to talk to you in private. Y- yes, Dad. I'll be glad to. It wasn't his fault, Mr. Andrews. He was only doing his duty, Mr. Andrews. We'll talk about that later, Betty. Now, well, where's the car? In front of the police station where the sergeant left it. And the Nazi prisoner's lying in the back. Oh, Archie, I told you I don't want to hear any more nonsense about the Nazi prisoner. When you get home, you'll receive your proper punishment, both from me and Mr. Weatherby. <laughs> yes, Dad. Oh, all right. Where's the car? It's right. Why, it's right. Standing in front of... Well, gee whiz. What do you know? It's been stolen again. <laughs> I will put a bullet through your head right now. You stupid Americans, you are all the same. Soft, no brains. You will find out soon enough that you have not won the war. Now, listen carefully. I am going to drive into that shed at the end of the road. Then I am going to untie your ropes and we will change clothes. But I want to warn you of one thing. If you make the least sound, I will kill you, you understand? On the other hand, maybe we won't change clothes. 
No. I will just take yours and put you out on the highway in your underwear. <laughs> yeah, that will be funny. <laughs> that will be very funny. A real American joke. <laughs> <laughs> You say your car was right in front of the police station and it was stolen? Sure. Don't you remember? Your man put it there himself. And I'm a witness. So am I. No, just a minute. Just a minute. Nobody can steal a car from in front of a police station. That's unheard of. That's what you say. No, just a minute, Mr. Andrews. There must be some mistake. We'll get this matter straightened well, out. Well, you'd better get it straightened out, officer, or I'll, I'll sue the city. No, look here, Mr. Andrews. You can't go around threatening a police officer. I'm not threatening any police officer. I want my car. Now, keep calm, Mr. Andrews. We're going to check. I out. am calm. Well, maybe we ought to organize a search. That'll get enough out of you, Archie. You've caused enough trouble for one day. Oh, boy. Here comes Mr. Lodge. Now he'll tell Veronica. Oh, you are, Andrews. Oh, Mr. Lodge, I've been meaning to get in touch with you about Mr. Hotchkiss. Precisely I... what I want to talk to you about, Andrews. Oh. I appointed you a committee of one to meet Mr. Hotchkiss and take him through the school. Yeah, well, and I... now you've gone and lost him. I have not lost him. I haven't even seen him. I am not interested in your oh. explanation, Andrews. You yes, were supposed man. to meet Mr. Hotchkiss, huh? and here I find you in the police station. Oh, my oh. car was stolen. That is no excuse. Quiet! 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 Shut up! Yes, sir. Now, go ahead. What are you saying? Yes? Yes? Oh, is that so? Okay, we'll investigate at once. Well, okay, Mr. Andrews, your car's been located. We just got a report that it was seen on the main highway heading north. What? And the Nazi prisoner was driving it. A uh, Nazi prisoner in my car? That's what I've been trying to tell you. Yeah, he must have been tied his ropes. Well, well, well what are we waiting for? Come on, let's go. Andrew. What? How about Hotchkiss? I haven't got Hotchkiss. I haven't seen Hotchkiss. I spent all morning looking for him, and I spent the whole afternoon looking for him. And I made a hundred phone calls, and I sent out I ten telegrams. Him. He wasn't on the train, and he's not in the capital, and he's not in Riverdale, yes, and what's more, I don't care if he never gets here. Uh, I am uh, sick of Hotchkiss, uh, and I'm sick of you too, Lodge. Uh, and if you want an annex, you can build it yourself. Now put that in your Hotchkiss and smoke it. <laughs> You American pig, come out. Come out. So, I will take off your ropes now. Remember what I told you. If you let out even the smallest whisper, I will kill you. Now, we will take off the blanket. This is an outrageous. Yes. Now start taking off your clothes. No, never. I'll, I'll, Do you I'll, see this gun? I can assure you I will not hesitate to use it. Remember, my friend, I am a Nazi. We Nazis do not make empty threats. Now, remove your claws. It's so hot in here. You, you'll you pay for this. You and everybody in this town, particularly those, those nasty kids. Don't talk so much. You are wasting time. <laughs> I feel so sleepy. I guess it is because... Yeah. Here are the pants. All right. Now start with your other. I think I will sit down. Yeah. So will I. Don't try to run away. I can see you. Well, uh, I can see you. Me too. So... on the side of the road. Mike, slow down. Who okay, you? Yeah, yeah, they lead to that shed. All right, Mike, pull in. Who okay. Yeah, it looks like maybe we got something here. Now, careful, everybody. This man's dangerous. All right. We're right behind you, Chief. Yeah, right behind you, Chief. Oh, boy, this is exciting. Now, come on, Mike. Give me a hand with this door. Okay. All right. Come out with your hands up. We got your... Co- what the devil? Hey, there, there he is. He... 
He's asleep on the floor. His blanket's off. And he's lost his pants. Oh, look, Arch. There's another one. There are two of them. Yeah, this car is still running. Carbon monoxide must have knocked them both out. Yes, there's something wrong with the exhaust, Chief. All right, Mike. Let's bring him outside. Right behind you, Chief. Come on, Jughead. Let's give him a hand. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Drop him here. Hey, come on. Come on. Slip out of it. Come on, you. Where, 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 where am I? Why, why, Mr. Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss? Who's Hotchkiss? This gentleman. He's the representative in the governor's office. We've been looking for him all day. Oh, boy. Then this other bird must be the escaped Nazi. Oh, my head. Oh, Mr. Hotchkiss, what happened? Oh, those kids. Huh? <laughs> That's them. They kidnapped me. Oh, what? boy. Archie, I think I'm going home. I just remembered something I had to do right away. Well, I don't understand, Mr. Hotchkiss. I mean, finding you here. We've been looking for you all day about the annex. Andrews, I want you to know that after what these kids have done to me, I'll never consent to an annex. Oh. Never. Look at my hair. It's half gone. Oh, boy. Can't we go home, Mr. Archie? Mr. Hotchkiss, if you will only tell us what happened. I'll tell you what happened. After I have those kids arrested for assault and battery and kidnapping. Oh, boy. Well, Archie, what do you know about this? <laughs> me, Dad? Me? You explain yourself at once. I'll tell you what they did. They kidnapped me from in front of the school. They beat me over the head with a shovel. They, yes, sir, they... Archie, yes, sir. Here are your pants. Mm-hmm. And let me shake your hand. Eh? What? Say, shake my hand? What for? Is this another trick? Uh, capturing that Nazi prisoner must have been quite a job. Capture? Uh, but I never... No, no. <laughs> no need being modest, Mr. Hotchkiss. You deserve all the credit. I do? Of course. You'll be a national hero. Pictures in all the papers. Picture... Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, of course, it was a rather difficult job. You bet. Say, how did you ever do it? Uh, did you know he had a gun? Oh, of course. He threatened me with it. But I... Well, I just said to myself, Hotchkiss... It's your duty to do the patriotic thing and hold your ground. Well, I want to shake your hand, sir. It isn't every day that you have a chance to meet a hero in person. Yes, yes. Archie, we are going home, and when we get there, there are certain things... Oh, now, look, Andrews, look, don't be too rough on the boy. I'll handle this in my own way, Mr. Hotchkiss. I can assure you he will get his full and just punishment. And I'll notify the parents of the other two. Now, Andrews, don't be pig-headed. Kids will be kids, you know, but I thought you wanted. Never mind what you thought. Forget it. And don't stand there gaping. Uh, give me my pants uh, so we can go back into town and uh, and talk about your annex. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Hotchkiss. Golly! <laughs> Well, that wraps up another visit to Riverdale with Archie Andrews, his family, and his friends. But they'll be with us again next week, same time, same station. So be on hand, won't you? There'll be plenty of fun and excitement. Hey, Chuck, listen. Yeah, here I am, Arch. I'm still here. Oh, look, Chuck, I'm in a very difficult spot. you got to help me out. You've got it. Okay. What now? Well, i got things all straightened out with Veronica, kind of, but she's still sort of sore at me. And i got to straighten out about the dance with Betty. She said it was okay if I went with Veronica. But Mom says I still got to go on the picnic with Betty. Only Veronica's going to come along, too, with you. Relax, Archie, relax. Today's Archie Andrews script was written by Ben Kagan and is based on the copyrighted feature appearing in Archie Comics magazine. The music was composed and conducted by Leo Kempinski, and the entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. This is Ken Banghart saying, have a pleasant weekend. This is the National Broadcasting Company.